I am super excited for this experiment because today I want to start figuring out how big of an impact does fertilizing have on how well our plants grow. So in today's experiment, what we're going to do is take these six tomato plants and six pepper plants and plant them into three unique environments, all with different levels of fertilization and track them over the course of the season so we can see how big of an impact fertilization has on how well they grow. So to get started, let's focus on the first set of plants over here and we're gonna call this environment number one. And what I'm gonna do with them is plant them into just a regular sterile store-bought seedling mix. So this is one of ProMix's potting blends as really a good product, but it's not super high on nutrition. So I'm gonna be really curious to see how the plants do over the course of the season. So for these plants, all that I'm going to do is grab five gallon grow bags and fill it up to about two inches from the top of the grow bag. Then I'm gonna dig a little transplant hole. And from there, I'm simply gonna pop these tomatoes and these peppers into that blend. Alrighty, so environment A is all set. No feeding, no fertilization happening in environment A. And my hypothesis with those ones is that they're gonna really struggle. As the plants begin to put on all of their growth through the summer, they're not gonna have any nutrients, and as a result, probably won't do all that well. But we're gonna to have to wait to see if that ends up being the case. Let's move on to setting up environment B. So the mixture that I'm gonna plant these ones into is 50% the exact same ProMix as environment A, but now I'm also going to add in 50% compost. So what I'm doing in this instance is now not using just 100% pro mix with no nutrition, but rather really starting to incorporate some organic matter that's gonna be packed with nutrients and microbes for these plants to hopefully grow significantly better. Now, when it comes to transplanting them, I'm gonna be planting them into the exact same grow bags. They're gonna be getting the exact same amount of water, and I'm also gonna be putting straw across the top of all these before I put them into the garden. Alrighty, so environment B is all set. And my hypothesis on environment B is I think these are gonna grow really well. The reason why is because like 50% compost, that is a really significant amount of organic matter that's gonna have tons and tons of nutrients for them to be ultimately putting on tons of growth. So for environment C, what we're going to do is start with the exact same blend of 50% compost and 50% pro mix. I'm gonna fill all the grow bags up with this just like in environment B. So up until this point, everything is the exact same as environment B. But now in each of the transplant holes, I'm going to put one handful of worm castings. And then immediately after that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of 444 organic fertilizer. The reason why I'm doing this is I wanna have even more nutrients, even more microbial life right in the root zone where I'm planting each of these plants. And I'm gonna be curious to see, does this help the plants grow even more, even bigger, even better than when it's just 50% compost with no additional fertilization or amendments in place. Alrighty, so there we have it. Environment A, B, and C. These babies are all set and ready to begin growing for the season. I've genuinely got no idea what's going to happen from here. I'm super curious and excited to see what the results are going to be of this experiment. So what I wanna do now is fast forward to a little bit later on in the season for an update on how they're doing. Alrighty, it is now August 26th, so about 65 days since we started this experiment. And just on the other side of this wood, I have all of the results. And let me tell you, there are some super interesting things and some really, really exciting things. So to begin diving in, let's take a look at the peppers grown in environment number one. And remember, these are the ones planted in 100% pro mix with no compost, no worm castings, and no organic fertilizer. And as we can see, a pretty sad state of affairs here with our peppers. But at the same time, this is kind of what we predicted and expected to see. Remember, there's no organic matter, no compost, no fertilizer in there. So there isn't any nutrition for the plant to be putting to use to put out all kinds of beautiful foliage growth or ultimately the flowers and peppers as well. And that's why we see the plant totally, totally struggling here. Now in terms of total yield, let's just quickly add up the peppers to see how many actually grew. So environment number one had a total yield of four peppers. Now let's move on to environment number two where they received 50% ProMix and 50% compost. All right, so as we can see right beside environment number one, they've clearly grown significantly better. 
they're taller, there's more foliage on the plant, and it also looks like more peppers. However, they also aren't like absolutely thriving. If we take a look at a couple of the peppers in my garden, they are absolutely way more kind of like vivid and vibrant and vivacious, but these ones here, they're doing okay. Now, of course, what matters most is how many peppers did it yield? Now let's now quickly add them up to get that number. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's already a 300% increase compared to environment one where there was no compost in the mix. But does it get even better when we add worm castings and organic fertilizer into the mix? Well, to answer that, let's take a look at environment number three. Alrighty, now this is what we want to be seeing. These plants have grown so well. These are a couple of the best pepper plants that I've absolutely ever grown. The foliage is super green and lush. There are tons and tons of big, fully grown peppers on the plant. And as a matter of fact, there's even more flowers that are now coming out on the plant, which is a sign that it's trying to produce even more. So I am absolutely thrilled with how these grew. But to answer the most important question, how many peppers are on the plant? Let's add them up. This is gonna take a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 peppers that are already growing and developing on the plant. And I say already because there are so many little flowers also on the plant that that would probably go up to 60 or 70 over the course of the next couple of weeks here. So needless to say, the worm castings and the organic fertilizer has made a huge impact on how well they've grown. And both of those are included in my transplant kit. So if you wanna get your hands on the exact worm castings and organic fertilizer that I use to grow these peppers, you can grab them at the link in the description to this video. So really, really excited about the results that we see here with the peppers. And to be honest, the results with the tomatoes are almost even more interesting. Now, just before I grab them, if you've enjoyed this video so far and you wanna see more experiment videos, then it would mean the world to me if you went ahead and subscribed to the channel here and left a comment letting me know that you enjoy these videos. To be honest, I get a lot of really nasty comments of people saying this could be done better or you don't have enough variables at play, so on and so forth totally all valid, but this also has been really helpful in me learning how to garden. And I think it's been valuable for some of you as well. So if you want more videos like this, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Now, that being said, let me clear these out of the way and let's get on to the tomatoes. And like I said, this is almost even more interesting in some ways. And we'll get to that as we go through the results here. So to begin diving in, let's take a look at environment number one, which was 100% ProMix, no compost, no worm castings, no fertilizer. All right, and as we can see, these have actually grown quite a bit better than I anticipated, and certainly a lot better than the peppers that were also in environment number one. And I have some kind of suspicions for why that might be the case for the peppers here, which I'm gonna share in just a minute. And another piece I wanna just quickly comment on is that these are determinate tomatoes, so we aren't looking for them to be super tall. They're gonna remain fairly short and bushy all along. But the most important question, of course, is, how many tomatoes did they yield? So let's add them up to find out. All righty, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. 67. So we got 67 tomatoes on just these two right here. And again, that honestly surprises me that it was able to produce this amount of fruit without there being anything in the soil. So just before we touch on that a little bit more, let's now take a look at environment number two, where the tomatoes were planted into a blend of 50% ProMix and 50% compost. All right, and it looks like it's a fairly similar story to what we saw with the peppers. I think environment two, it's looking a little bit bigger, a little bit more lush, like the plants definitely don't look as fatigued as environment number one. But of course, the most important question, how many fruit did it yield? So let's start adding those up to get the answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 21, 22, 23, 74. 74 tomatoes that are grown on the plant in environment two. So that's, again, a really great performance here. The plant has done super well, but certainly not the 300% difference that we saw with the peppers from environment one to environment two. And so the kind of like hypothesis that I have on this is that I bought these tomatoes from a nursery, a different nursery than the peppers, and it's possible that they had some form of a fertilizer in the seed cells that I bought them in. That's the only thing that I can think of in terms of why 
why these grew so well in environment number one. And this actually makes me want to redo this experiment next year and start the seedlings myself so I know everything that's been going on all the way from the very point that they were still just seeds. Now, if you've got any other hypotheses, I'd be super curious to hear those down in the comments, but let's now take a look and see, did the tomatoes grow even better when we added worm castings and organic fertilizer to the mix? Alrighty, and I know what you're probably thinking, they look like they're even shorter than environment two and environment number one. But what's actually happened here is that the stems have bent right off of the little bamboo stake that I have in there because of how much fruit is actually growing on them. So they've done super, super well, have been incredibly, incredibly productive as well. But most importantly, how much fruit is actually on the plant? Let's add it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 94. So environment three had a total harvest of 94 tomatoes. And that's still a 32% increase over environment number two. So what's the takeaway for me? Well, I am absolutely 100% going to continue planting into my garden with a lot of compost, plus worm castings and organic fertilizer. This is what I use all throughout my garden beds and I'm getting tons and tons of tomatoes, cucumbers, potatoes, onions, and more. So it's working super well across the board. And so if you wanna get your hands on some of the exact same worm castings and organic fertilizer that I utilize in my garden, simply head to the link down in the description of this video. And if you want more experiment videos, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel and let me know down in the comments an experiment that you'd be curious for me to run. And lastly, if you want five tips for how to grow even more tomatoes, check out this video right here.